The whole basis of society depends on having um, clean air, clean water, protection from floods and hazards and diseases, having nice landscapes, um, having a diversity of crops, having a diversity of wildlife. All those things actually underpin um, society and they underpin economic growth. So this idea that we could do um, sustainable development, sustainable economic growth, without taking the environment seriously, I think um, is now recognised to be a mistake. The work that I've done, uh, particularly over the last 20 years or so, has all been um, about conservation and environmental sustainability. So that's a subject that is um, of public interest and it's for the public good. Um, my role has mostly been to work on the science policy interface, to try and interact with policy makers to help them find solutions to these problems. But of course, um, communicating that to the wider public is absolutely critical. I probably should have done more than that than I have. I, I don't regard public communication as my strongest skill, um, but I've certainly worked with groups of people who do do it. And um, many, much of the work I did with IUCN, for example, uh, with WWF, they take that side very seriously. And I kind of feel that my role has been helping them to get the story straight that they then take out into the public communication. Valuing nature is about understanding what value it has so that you invest in it properly. So, um, you know, just in the same way as you might decide um, that you're going to repair a hole in the roof of your house rather than spend the same amount of money going on a skiing holiday. That's an expression of how much a house that's waterproof and heatproof is worth to you. And whereas the skiing holiday is just money gets spent um, and it's gone. So the house is, this, is a sort of analogy for the environment. That's the thing that we need to sustain. Um, if we go on treating the environment as if it has no value, then people continue to trash it and we won't get the investment in it that's needed to secure its benefits for people. So that's sort of what the natural capital argument is about. It's saying it's, a cap it's an asset and I know people don't like using this economics language, but I think it brings it into the real world of um, decision making at the highest level. Where are we going to invest? Are we going to invest in built infrastructure, roads and railways and dams and airplanes? Are we going to invest in maintaining the natural capital infrastructure, nature itself, um, for all the things that it does for us? I regard myself as very lucky to have had a career as a scientist. I, I mean, it has its uh, hard times and its obstacles and setbacks, but it's a real privilege uh, to be a practicing research scientist. You get to um, find out things about the world, be the first person to know some things about the world. But beyond that, um, the world needs the widest variety of people doing science. We're not going to make the breakthroughs that we need to solve environmental problems if it's a narrow set of um, particular kinds of academic success that lead people into scientific careers. And, and that's something that I've learned through observing successful scientists um, in many different settings.